Portnoy has been promoted to conservatives as a kind of model, right? Basically, if the right wants to win the culture war, it has to learn to coexist with so-called barstool conservatism. And Portnoy is obviously the leader of that. But what is barstool conservatism? And I think one way to put it is man cave conservatism, right? Basically, you accept pretty much all of the progressive uh, planks of faith on things like abortion and whatever and liberal feminism. The, the fact is, is that Portnoy has been promoted to us as someone who we have to basically coexist with and compromise with. The guy's a total scumbag. He's a sleaze. Well, and so this this does kind of get to the, the crux of the matter, though, because it, you actually have to be a conservative and you have to stand up for conservative values at some point that it seems like when you put pressure on these guys, um, like we saw with Portnoy in this situation, as Darren Beatty, who was just on before you, has said, it's when they go into the pain box, they can't handle it. They yeah. can't stand it. And I think this, it, we're, we're teeing on something. I called it man cave conservatism. Yeah. This idea that you're this suburban man and the only masculinity that's available to you or that's allowed to you under our current, situ- our current situation, our current system is you can drink beer, you can watch sports, you can have a, even have a cigar maybe, play your video games. And it's, it's within the confines of the man cave that the wife lets you have. And you can actually go, I was looking at this up last night. I just looked up man caves. And it's like it, but it's all female signaled, you know, there's like a picture of, you know, Bob, Bobby's man cave and a picture of beer clinking. And that's, those aren't masculine virtues. I mean, there's nothing, I'm not going to say that, you know, there's nothing, you know, if you want to watch a sports game, watch a sports game, but the idea that you should center an entire section of your life around these things, no, go, go be a father, right? Go, go raise your children, go better yourself. These are, these are hobbies or recreational pursuits. This isn't something you should center your life around. Right. Well, I think that's an important point. Basically, uh, you have agreed to have uh, basically a kind of daycare area where you can go and be a man in this really sterilized, devitalized way in your corner or often literally in your basement out of sight. Right. I mean, it's it's really uh, infantilizing and there's there's actually nothing vital about it. There's nothing masculine about it. Uh, it's it's kind of like the kids' table. I mean, that that's the irony of the man cave is in many ways it is a kind of kids' table where you do things that actually degenerate uh, your yourself as a man. You're watching sports. You're not actually participating in sports and doing things to take care of your mind and body. And in many ways, you're actually just kind of poisoning yourself, right? Uh, I mean, I've, I've compared excessive sports watching to watching pornography. I actually think it's really similar. You're watching other men do things instead of, you know, improving yourself as a man, whether it's being father, being a father or whatever your profession is. You're actually kind of just uh, detaching from masculinity, uh, but you're doing it in a sad uh, basement environment that resembles uh, your run of the mill commercial sports bar, right? Right, so the idea is that you're, you know, and, and by the way, even even if you're at, you know, at a, a sports bar or a corner bar or a town bar, at least you're out and, and you're in, in getting involved in some kind of community, you're engaging in some kind of communal act, but they're trying to tear that away from everybody now. They're trying to tear away uh, the social fabrics. They're, they've even taken those away and they want you to just sit in your, in your quote unquote man cave. I love how you call it the, the daycare center for adults. Um, and that's, you know, that's where you get to have it's a Sunday afternoon. And it's it's part of, or it can be part of, this idea of an extended adolescence, where adolescence never quite ends, and that you never le- lean into just being an adult and taking responsibility for things. That way. Look, I, I've got two kids. I got a four year old and a one year old, and guess what? That's that's your responsibility. That is going to be your responsibility, and there's nothing that's ever going to slough that off. I think it's a false offer. That they're offering you this idea that you can go to college for free and then you can get this great job. And you don't have to worry about your debt and everything will be fine. And just go down to your man cave. Yeah. Don't do anything that would upset the apple cart. Just go about life the way it is. I mean, that's that's brave new world. That's Huxleyism. That's not living. 